Um, my intent is to talk, have a bold conversation in keeping with today's themes and talk about Accenture as a corporate so social responsibility player, the innovation that we've brought with respect to Accenture development partnerships, and this notion of a social entrepreneur. So before I get started, let me just tell you a brief story, and, and, and perhaps the story will help relay why I became, a, or hope to be, a, a social entrepreneur. An elderly gentleman is walking down the beach, uh, and in the distance he sees what looks like a, a small figure dancing. And as he approaches it, he notices that it's a young child, and that child is, is standing amongst a bunch of st stranded starfish. And the child is effectively picking up the starfish and throwing them back into the sea. And the old man looks at the young child and says, young man, this is an exercise in futility. There is no way in which you're going to possibly be able to save or make a difference to any of these starfish. There are just so many. And as he picks up a starfish and throws it back into the ocean, he said, you know what? It made a difference to that starfish. And I think that if I think of my own career from an Accenture perspective and the way in which it evolved over a period of time, it was that story that effectively changed my outlook uh, from a career perspective. When I was nine, I wanted to be a fireman like all nine-year-olds do. And when I was 18, I wanted to be a consultant. And when I was 21, I wanted to be a partner. And when I was 31, I became a partner. I kind of said, what next? And I think the challenge that we had was I heard that story and said, you know what, within the context of what I do for a living, I have an opportunity to be a social entrepreneur. I have the ability to effectively be an individual who is passionate about social change and how I could potentially use the role that I have within the organization to effectively bring around that social change. And I think that when we talk about having a bold conversation in the context of today, I think what I'm going to leave you with at the end of today's conversation is a challenge in terms of saying, can you be a social entrepreneur within the, within the confines of the organization that you represent and potentially make a difference? I think that the, uh, the important aspect associated with this notion of a social entrepreneur is that they effectively seek to be able to initiate social change from within the constructs of the organizations within which they work. They think about how can I effectively be a change for good within the corporate model that I exist? How can I use my sphere of influence to effectively change the way in which investment is taking place, etc.? And I think there is an interesting dynamic associated with why we see businesses becoming more and more involved in this notion of social entrepreneurialism. I think that the, um, the issue associated with that is that if we consider the social constructs, and there's a statistic up here in terms of the board about the role, for example, the Bill Gates Foundation has had, the Gates Foundation rather has had, on the impact of malaria, it effectively has saved the lives of five and a half million children. That is a significant impact in terms of what we tr traditionally think of as a role for an, or you know, for an organization such as the World Health Organization, et cetera. I think there is an aspect associated with the way in which markets are going to change and therefore the way in which business is becoming more and more actively involved in social change. If we consider the way in which the future consumption patterns are going to change by 2030. There is no doubt that business today is trying to understand how it can ensure and improve the livelihood of a great, a large number of individuals living within the broader Asia-Pacific region because they are effectively going to be the consumers of tomorrow's products. And if I consider the age of my children at 9 and 10, you know, in 20 years' time, it's going to be the role that they play within organizations effectively servicing that new customer base. America is not going to be the largest consumer anymore. It's going to move fundamentally from a re, uh, location perspective. And so as a consequence of that, I think we're seeing business becoming more and more actively involved in terms of how it can shape and influence the emerging populations of Asia Pacific, of Africa, for example. I think there's also the consideration in terms of the way in which people are changing from a, a social responsibility perspective. There's this issue associated with a greater consciousness in terms of when we go out and buy goods and services that perhaps didn't exist previously. We notice that things are perhaps you know, more environmentally friendly. We are potentially prepared to pay a certain premium for certain goods and services if we have the notion that they are effectively doing good from an environmental perspective. And that is then changing the dynamic. I'm sure many of you might have watched the, uh, the CNN broadcast of late with respect to the, the cocoa wars talking about uh, Nestle and its change in strategy associated with um, the cocoa plantations and its coffee, et cetera, effectively understanding that it has a role to play in terms of ensuring and safeguarding the livelihoods of the workers that are dependent upon them uh, and from a factory perspective in terms of being able to promote and promulgate uh, that workforce. And I think the last thing is most probably just a view that we have associated with business. Business, again, is looking for innovation in terms of how it can effectively play a role, how it can access new markets. And those markets are developing markets. 
I have a colleague who gave, gives an interesting talk on, on a TED talk about Africa as the hub of innovation from a mobile perspective. Uh, and what he talks about is effectively is one of these, uh, these applications, the fact that this application facilitates the electronic transfer of funds in an environment that doesn't necessarily have a large infrastructure associated with commercial banking. It facilitates the remittance of money, it facilitates the payment of bills, it facilitates the mechanism by which individuals are able to effectively transact with one another in a, in a, in a currency basis and therefore promote the livelihood, extend the business, and in many ways create new consumers where they weren't previously consumers before. And so if we think of our role as, as individuals within a corporate, this notion of being an entrepreneur, et cetera, I think there is a key opportunity for us to be able to embrace both the business aspect and our own uh, corporate social responsibilities as individuals and bring that to bear. When I talk about Accenture as an organization in terms of what it's trying to do around this notion of social uh, entrepreneurship, there is this notion of what we call Accenture Development Partnerships. Now, Accenture Development Partnerships is very different from the Accenture business that may be called upon to effectively help our clients improve the way in which they effectively execute their businesses. It is an organization that's created in 2003 to effectively look at how we can create an opportunity for social entrepreneurialism to exist within our corporate fabric. It's the mechanism by which we sought to understand about we can take the ability and the capability of the Accenture organization, its relationships, the people that it has, the alliance organizations that it has, and effectively put that to good use in terms of supporting a number of uh, non-governmental organizations and providing them access to a set of goods and services and therefore promoting social well-being in a way in which we most probably wouldn't have been able to have done so beforehand. And what we've done is, do, is effectively look at the way in which we can execute that from an innovative business model perspective. And that innovative business model perspective is effectively the way in which we have taken our traditional fee-based structure and said, we think that there is an opportunity for us as an organization to make an active contribution to um, the NGO from a promulgation perspective in terms of supporting their development. So there's a foregoing of the, of the actual uh, margin that we would typically charge our clients. We forego the, the loaded cost. Now the loaded cost is the cost associated with things that each employee attracts, such as their laptop rental, the cost of their training, their leave days, etc. Everything over and above their salary. And we said that it's important that the individuals within our organization also make a contribution and they are prepared to make a salary sacrifice in terms of being part of the social entrepreneurialism opportunity. And therefore, the, the, the innovation effectively lies in allowing a group of organizations to access the, the, the wealth of Accenture's capability. The 281 odd thousand people that work for the Accenture organization in terms of being able to promulgate and support and therefore better deliver a set of goods and services uh, to a variety of other organizations. When we think about how we can effectively play a role in doing that, we think about it in terms of three different aspects. We think about ADP, or Accenture Development Partnerships, as an organization. We think about the role that we have in terms of being able to create momentum across a client base, across our organization, across mother, many other uh, industry players. And we also then think about it in terms of the context, being able to understand what is unique and different. And let me touch on a couple of these uh, as, we, uh, as we talk about the presentation. So this is a, an infographic. It talks about uh, ADP. We put it together uh, after our 10th 10-year uh, 10 anniversary. And the thing that strikes me is I, I, I selected three discrete uh, particular topics. The first one is the fact that we have an ability to effectively collaborate with 140 plus organizations. So as a a business within a business, the ability to be able to network, to be able to bring together a vast array of business partners, different skills, etc., and bring those to, bring those to bear for, for social good. The second one is the sheer fact that over a 10-year period, we effectively provided more than $28 million worth of capability, funding, people's contributions from a cost perspective in terms of a variety of organizations that 10 years ago, or without the advent of ADP, would never have existed. And I think the last thing is the view that we have just in terms of the dramatic impact that it's had on the actual employee engagement and satisfaction of our employees. So I heard one of the previous speakers this morning was, was talking about the notion associated with 
how employee engagement effectively increases as a consequence of, uh, of uh, social responsibility programs, et cetera. I believe, and I think one of the things that we see happening within our own organization is that as a consequence of effectively having this as an offering, we're not only differentiated to our employees, but we effectively have a differentiated proposition to potential employees, and that helps us from an organization perspective. So there is a value in us as an organization in terms of the ADP, but there's also value for our people in terms of being able to make a contribution. The second aspect I think is important in terms of helping to promulgate that is that there is an active effort from a, a drive in terms of how we can further support and develop the growth of this notion of social entrepreneurialism. The ability to effectively fund and support programs that create a greater awareness, not only within our own organization, but across other organizations. And that keeps individuals like myself fulfilled in terms of being able to understand that this is an ongoing commitment uh, to, to social good. And then I think the third aspect really is kind of that ability that we have as an organization to be able to reach out and network a vast array of organizations, whether they are private sector organizations, public sector organizations, or even the development sector. And we sit in this unique place as an organization in terms of the ability to be able to bring those three together and take the, the supply chain thinking that we have with the supply chain capability of an organization such as Coca-Cola, for example, the medical capability of Pfizer, for example, and being able to mesh those all together to effectively support a particular developmental sector goal in terms of improving the lives and well-beings of, uh, of the various individuals around us. So, in conclusion, what I really wanted to kind of do is leave you with another story. I started with the story of, uh, of the starfish, and I want to leave you with a bit of an African heritage in terms of a story about some ostriches. And the story goes like this, in that it was a Saturday morning and a group of ostriches sitting on the African uh, savannah were paging through the, uh, the weekend newspaper. Hard to believe, but it's true. And they came across an advert that said, we will teach you how to fly. They all got up. They effectively arrived at the, uh, at the training school. They sat down in the class. They went through a set of expectation gatherings. They captured all the key points in terms of what they wanted to get out of the learning course. They sat down on the first day and they learned about the theory of flight. They effectively sought to examine and understand how ostriches can potentially fly. And on the second day, they sat down and they learned about the actual physical mechanics of flying. They learned about exercises and speed and thrust and lift and all sorts of things. Um, and on the third day, they effectively put it into practice. They had an opportunity to take the theory from the first day, the mechanics of the second day, and, you know, there were those that got it right in the first little bit on the second time. And at the end of the day, once they'd all been successful in effectively learning how to fly, they sat down and they reflected upon the learning of the, uh, of the last three days. They filled in the questionnaire. They said they'd had a brilliant time. They'd learned lots. They'd been able to take this notion of wanting to fly, putting it into practice effectively. And at the end of the class, they finished up the, uh, the examination. They got up and they walked home. And the challenge, I think, associated with the production in terms of having bold conversations about today is that you each face a challenge. You can sit through today's presentation and say that it's inspiring, it's exciting. You can have a bold conversation for the, for the eight hours that you've been here. The key question is going to be, are you going to stand up and walk home or are you going to stand up and fly home and do something different in terms of the context of today? So if my presentation hasn't been enough to help you motivate you, I hope that the last video clip will be. And thank you very much for your time. Someone who is a change maker, a risk taker, uh, somewhat creative, and certainly entrepreneurial. All the entrepreneurial attributes, but within the context of a large, pre-scaled ecosystem like a corporate. Uh, these are people who are part of the company, but can see beyond the way that the company currently operates, the way it currently uh, creates value, can see new connections, new areas of opportunity and possibility. For me, entrepreneurship is really about scale and impact, and the ability to make a big difference quite quickly. A social entrepreneur is, in my experience and view, a graceful warrior. Someone that is willing to go after the biggest opportunities and problem solve them with a level of tenacity that is, that is unfounded anywhere else but at the same time be graceful enough and astute enough to bring others along with you. What characterises them uh, perhaps most fundamentally 
is that ability to connect with people both inside and outside the uh, company organization from the top to the very bottom. It's a behavior, it's a mindset rather than a set of criteria. In my experience, it's something like a calling <laughs> to a certain extent. Uh, and I don't mean that in a religious sense, I mean that in a, an idea that just won't go away, that won't let you forget about it when you go to bed at night, you're waking up about it, you care about it so deeply and you feel so strongly about the opportunity that you just have to do something about it. Governments are largely failing us. Uh, investors and consumers are not really supporting uh, business to drive social and environmental change in the way that these agendas need to be uh, driven. So more and more of this will uh, fall upon business. Most of the world's greatest problems will not be solved by one sector or one um, discipline. It will require a group of people coming together and sharing ideas and coming up with a really holistic, integrated solution. Now let's face it, 50 plus of the largest 100 economies in the world are businesses. And if we can get small change in these huge super tankers, if I use that analogy, just one degree of change in a massive organization can lead to massive impact downstream. Systemic issues can't be solved alone. We have to work together. We need you. <laughs>